Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Where's the juice? <laughs> it comes around 9. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, have you watched any Pac-12 after dark games this season? Uh, Do you know what that, all that is about? Honestly? No. <laughs> I don't. What is that? that when Pac-12 teams play really late at night, just a bunch of crazy things happen. And the last time Oregon played at Arizona State two years ago, same thing ensued. But we'll see, I guess, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, I'm sure it'll be a good ball game. Uh, uh, two good football teams, and again, I think the team that plays the best will win. Balazs is quite the load, but also brings the speed with him as well. What's the key to, to slowing a guy of that size and speed? Uh, you got to get a lot of guys to the ball. You know, you can't just rely on uh, one guy to tackle him. You got to get guys running to the ball, getting off blocks, and, and uh, gain tackle. You know, you just can't. Like I say, he's a big bat, uh, an athletic bat, uh, so that makes it even more important that you get more than one guy to the ball to tackle. What's kind of the rule against running quarterbacks of when a secondary guy can come up to try and get him or stick with this guy that's running the route? Oh, uh, you got to plaster with him till he crosses the line of scrimmage. <laughs> you know, if you stay back there and. He hadn't crossed the line of scrimmage. He still can throw the football. You know, just hopefully your D line and uh, backers are in, in a position where if he do cross the line of scrimmage, then they can uh, get him for a minimal gain there. But uh, I think the key is try to contain him and not allow him to get out. And then, but more importantly, you got to make sure your DBs stay with their receivers. Why do you think Nick Pickett's been so successful early on? Um, honestly, I think because he really wants to be. You know, he came in here and uh, really wanted to play and. Committed himself to to learning from older guys, get in to learn the playbook, and, and then just giving everything he he have every every day in practice. You know, and, uh, he earned the respect of his teammates and his, and his coaches, and, and then went on the field and, and took care of business. What would you say is the status for Austin Fowler this week? Obviously, after missing Wyoming, uh, Austin to play. He's fine. You guys are number one in the country in explosive plays. The ASU defense kind of lends itself to home run plays. Do you feel like this sets up nicely for you guys? Um, I think if we go out and, and continue to have a great week of practice, first and foremost, and, and then go out with the same uh, mindset we've had in every ball game and, and, and then execute, we there's no telling what we, we're capable of doing. You know, it's just our guys going out and playing their best ball game and executing our plays. What do you like and, and what do you think could be better about the way the defense adjusts from opponent to opponent now going into Pac-12 play? Well, I think I just, just got to get better at everything we do, at, at tackling. Uh, we've been better, but we're not where we want to be in tackling. Uh, uh, we've been better in stopping the run. We want to continue to stop the run, you know, and, and can be, continue to get takeaways. You know, I thought that's been really good by guys being able to get the ball back to our offense and get off the field on third down. and. Uh, we just got to continue to focus on those things and, and can, to continue to get better in those things. You've been satisfied with the pass rush. I know you mentioned last week you got that kind of helped lead to some things in secondary. You feel like that's kind of instigated this defense getting some more pressure? Yeah, um, I think we've, we've gotten better at that every week um, since uh, since week one. And um, I thought some of the blitz that we, we ran uh, been very helpful getting Troy Dye in there and bringing pressure, you know, but um, of course, the pass rush has been critical for our DBs to be able to get some of the interceptions that they've, they've gotten. And even tip balls by our pass rush has been helpful for us. So um, that's been really good. Coach Joe's done a great job with our, our, our D-line, and, and I think those guys will continue to get better. Different kind of QB this week to go after. Maybe a guy who's going to move around a little bit more rather than kind of staying back there. Yeah, uh, he's, he's very athletic. He can beat you with his feet as long as as well as with his um, arm. So um, it's going to be important that, again, we contain him um, and plaster, like we were talking earlier, with, with the DB to stand with their receivers. But our D-line got to do a great job of standing their gaps and, and um, getting to the quarterback and, and, and squeezing them in there and not allowing him to run around. Two, two years ago in this game, Arion had the kind of the game-clinching interception. And since then, we haven't really seen a, a short of, of confidence out of him you know, with, in talking with us. but. What have you seen from him, you know, during your time, and, and just kind of how he kind of manages that? Um, Ariane is just—I've seen him grow to, since I've been here. He's—he's uh, he's taking school a little more serious. He's taking football serious. Um, 
he's been a great teammate, which is uh, really important to him and, and to our football team. And, and he's competing every single day. He don't take a day off. You know, I haven't seen him miss the practice since I've been here. You know, so that says a lot to me about what football means to the kid and, and, and what he want to get accomplished. Coach, you have a kicker in Ainshire, most accurate in program history. Only one attempt, though, on the year. Do you see him getting some more of those opportunities moving forward in the season? Um, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. If, if, if he's not getting those attempts, that means we're scoring touchdowns. So, uh, I, I prefer to score touchdowns and then keep that leg fresh. You know, But uh, when he's he's called upon, when we need him, uh, we expect for him to go in and continue to, to do what he's been doing. What type of energy does Schneider bring to the team outside of what he's able to do with his leg? Uh, he's a he's a um, a low key uh, comedian. I mean, he, he's he's a kid that's always having fun. He's always excited. He's enjoying life. And, uh, he enjoys being around his teammates. How's Malik coming along? Is he playing his way into shape? He is. Um, Malik's getting better uh, each and every week, and I think that's the biggest thing with him right now is just getting in football shape and. I think he's a lot better than where he was when he first got here, and um, I think he'll continue to make plays for us. It's, it's perfect timing now as we get in the Pac-12 play for him to start to get in that, in that shape. But um, he's coming along and um, feel good about where, where his future is. Is this Scott maybe getting some more reps this week? Yeah, um, same. Scott is just like Malik. He just got to get himself in football shape, you know. And, and as he continues to get himself in shape, you see him get more reps and. Uh, to see them help this football team. With how young some of those defensive linemen are, is there, have you seen a benefit from having a, a veteran like Scott who's played on a national title team, kind of teaching some of those young guys since he's arrived? Well, I think um, <clears throat> Scott is not only to the D-line, but to the entire football team to teach our guys um, what it's like to work and what it's like to be uh, a champion, how it was there for them at Clemson. Um, but I think it's been good just Scott's have come here and, and decided he wanted to be a part of a team and, and he embraced himself in here where the guys really appreciate him as a person and, and, and what he can do. And I see him with a lot of the younger guys. I see him with Jordan a lot. And I'm sure Jordan, one of those type of guys, he's going to take some information from anybody and, and try to help himself. And uh, But Scott, Scott is one of those guys that got to help our, our football team from a lot of different perspectives, not just on the football team. Defensively, you guys have been so good on third down and the takeaways as well. Are those two of the stats maybe after a game that you look at the most is third down efficiency and takeaways? Yeah, those um, are two big ones that we emphasize a lot in, in practice every day. Uh, they're, they're really important, you know, getting off the field defensively again, allows us to get the ball back and then taking the ball away again to get it back to our offense. So um, something we stress a lot and our guys are taking pride in doing that. And, um, we got to continue to do that. You know, we have a team in third down situation. It's good. Got to have a mentality of getting off the field. You know, and, and our guys have been doing it. We got to continue to do it in order to be successful. Is there another stat that you look at after a game that means a lot to the outcome? Uh, yes. Uh, whether we win or lose. It's a big one. Big one. Thanks, coach. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you all. Have a warm.